Reactive training systems. So the question that pops up quite a bit is where do you start uh, creating development blocks for lifters that you're just beginning to work with who you've got very little data to go on. Uh, so the whole emerging strategies concept is this systematic way to, to build a data repository for a particular athlete so that you can individualize their training plan based on what they respond best to. But in the beginning, you don't have any of that. So how do you get started? Um, I very rarely find myself in a position where I really don't have anything to go off of. Almost always there's, there's something, uh, there's training history. And that's probably the biggest thing, you know, people have trained, uh, before and you know, that experience either was good or, or not good. And, and that gives us some indication on where to go. You know, if they've done something, uh, you know, they did a, a standard training program, uh, standard linear periodization training program, uh, progressively increasing volume and that worked pretty well, then that's a good place to start. Uh, something similar to that in strategy. Obviously, you wouldn't want to do exactly the same thing. There's a reason why they decided to switch and uh, reason enough to try something a little bit different. But if they've got a good solid training history, uh, they have some idea of, of what's been effective in the past, uh, you should definitely make use of that information. Um, if they don't have that, then you're going to be basing a lot of it on an analysis of their their lifts, um, just kind of a needs assessment that you perform as a coach. We talk about that a lot, or we used to talk about it a lot more, actually, uh, and it's just kind of uh, fallen out of the trend, I think, in, in terms of powerlifting training and powerlifting coaching. Um, watching a lifter perform a near limit lift and taking note of, uh, of what happens, what breakdowns happen and, uh, you know, analyzing those to, to see where the weakest link is in the chain. So, um, it may be a, a movement pattern breakdown. Like we talked about chest ball and squat being kind of the most common thing. Um, we talk about bar path and the bench being probably the most common thing. So, um, at least that's, that's how I see it from, uh, from the work that I've done. Um, other people are going to see other things. And the point is that you would analyze their movement, uh, take note of what it is that you think that they need, uh, that would make them better. So if I see that, you know, this lifter has this chest fall pattern in the squat and I think that that's a uh, deficiency that needs to be corrected, then I'm going to bring some tools to bear uh, that aim to correct that. You know, I've got a, a number of different exercises that I feel helps to, to teach this movement the, the correct way, that rewards you for doing it correctly and punishes you for doing it incorrectly. And then, you know, you go from there, you, you test those out. Does it improve the competition result or not? And that's that's always the driving factor, right? And this has a, kind of a, a recursive, instructive flow for the coach as well. So say that I think, you know, this chest fall pattern in the squat is, uh, is detrimental, okay? And then uh, there are other people, other coaches who think that it's not detrimental. And, uh, in fact, I'm aware of some that think that it's beneficial that even teach it, right? Someone's right and someone's not. Now, if I correct this chest fall pattern and that consistently leads to improved one RMs in competition and that, uh, that result is better than, than other results, then I think I've got some, some pretty firm ground to stand on. On the other hand, if every time I, I treat that deficiency, um, you know, it, it doesn't work out or it just kind of is mediocre or, or we get better results 
from a different set of uh, applying a different set of tools, then maybe I need to revisit my my underpinning theory. There's a lot of learning that has uh, that can go on here if you're just willing to pay attention. There's learning at the individual level as far as what individually a lifter uh, responds best to in terms of their training, uh, but also it'll help you develop uh, develop your own theories as a coach uh, if you're paying attention and, and kind of aggregating these lessons learned over a longer period of time. As far as what do you do to uh, to get things going in these initial development blocks. What if you don't have a great training history on a lifter? Uh, let's say that you're working with a more novice lifter uh, who just doesn't have much to go on. Uh, well, in that case, you're probably dealing with movement deficiency uh, or movement proficiency uh, being your main limiting factor. And this to me is the factor that, that can tie everything together. You know, that it, it helps us to, uh, it allows us to, to use the same type of strategy for beginner, intermediate, advanced. Because really what you're doing is you're solving the athlete's problem. Uh, in a beginner, you're dealing with, you know, what's the weakness? And, and I know a lot of people like to say, well, if you're a beginner, you don't really have weaknesses. Everything is weak. Well, that's not very helpful. And to my to my thinking, it's more like just general movement proficiency is, is the main limiting factor. That's the main weakness at that point. So you would select your assistance exercises, your, your weakness correction exercises with that in mind that you're not targeting the bottom, you're not targeting chest fall, you're not targeting any of these things. You're targeting basic movement proficiency. So you may select pause variations, you may select tempo variations. Uh, or whatever you know informs your your coaching strategies at that point um, to to develop general movement proficiency, um, and then as they progress into intermediate stages, you know the answer to the question as far as what's holding them back, the answer to that's going to change. I think that it all ends up being uh, different answers to the same question. You know, different athletes have different solutions uh, as far as what's gonna work the best for them, but it's all the same basic question. It's all the same basic framework. Uh, so I think that's, that's really a, a solid direction for you to go in. Make your best estimate as far as what uh, is gonna make them better, and that estimate should get better with time. You know, when in doubt, you know, that's really what you're going on. That, that estimation, bringing your experience to bear, uh, bringing your analysis into the question here. And then with time, you'll develop a better and better sight picture on their individual response. And it may fit the model of, of your previous understanding, or it may not. But either way, uh, you're going to get better with time. Reactive Training Systems.